Hello, weaving people. So I want to talk about log cabin, and I am by no means an authority on log cabin or any other kind of weaving. I'm a beginner, but I think sometimes, you know, as I learn something new, I get all excited and want to share it, and it helps me to understand better when I explain it. Of course, a month later, I'll have some new discovery um, on this. But this rug is woven in log cabin, and basically the way this works is that you have a dark and a light warp alternating, or two colors. I've got multiple colors in here, but I think you can kind of see the dark and the light here. And I've threaded it in, so these sections here look like they were, I guess, four inch sections and two inch sections. And the way that this works, is that you have one color on one shaft and another color on the other shaft. And so um, if the dark threads are in the upper shaft, whichever shaft you want to number it, um, then they're going to show up as the cloth goes through. And if the, um, and so you'll only see basically the dark warp. And if the, lighter color th threads are in the upper shaft on top, then that's what you're gonna see. And the way that you get this to happen is that um, you throw a pick of a thinner thread in between each um, uh, weft of the, of the fabric. And so, um, so, oh, and, and this rug and this rug the the warps are doubled so they show up a little bit more now this rug was woven on the exact same warp but i didn't follow um, the log pattern log cabin pattern so i think you can see that then in um you know in this strip the it's light and this strip it's dark and it alternates because that's that's the way that it's threaded um, and I have to, I have to confess that um, I had threaded my loom for log cabin, but then I didn't realize that I was supposed to put another pick of another thread in between. So I was kind of wondering, well, why is my rug not looking like this rug, which I discovered after I went back and did some more reading. But they kind of hide that in some of the books um, explaining that. This book... Rag Rug Handbook um, has some different projects in here and it explains it pretty good. Um, so if you're interested, I mean the threading is just really, really simple. It's just dark light, dark light, dark light. When you want to change the section, then you'll have like two lights together or two darks together so that they're gonna alternate. So what I'm working on is um, going to be a table topper and so I only threaded these sections here with the actual log cabin threading and the, these sections are all light colored so it doesn't matter uh, which shed you're not really going to see a difference actually um, half of these is are is natural and half of it is white but you won't see that in the video so, oh, and you'll see the reverse of this on the back side. So I don't, I can't show you the back side, but um, I'm just gonna put my temple back in here. Oops. So in this section here, I'm weaving with the light threads are on top. And you can see just a little bit of the dark thread here. On the back side, you're going to see a dark section. Um, and then I'm going to switch that in just a second. But, and you know, the more I think about this, there's lots of possibilities with this. It's actually a very simple um, technique. And so, oh, that thing I need to talk about too, are floating salvages. And... I wasn't sure what I was going to do, so I didn't bother to um, uh, 
wind this fabric on a shuttle. These are a little bit narrower pieces. They're going to be table toppers. So I've done one throw of my um, fabric. Now I changed the shed. And notice now you can see the dark. So this is on top, but it's going to be on top of this um, thinner thread. And I think this is like a 5-2 cotton, something like that. I have on each edge a floating selvage. A floating selvage <coughs> does not go through the heddles, it just goes through the reed, it's on the outside. And um, my pattern, I always go under as I go in and over as I go out. So for every throw. And the reason for this is that you don't have to worry about catching this outside warp. You've got the um, floating selvage there, and so you just catch that each time. And so it goes a lot faster than having to figure out, well, wh what warp is my weft going to go over? Because I've got, you know, these two different wefts going through. So I'm going through on this side, I'm going under, and I'm just pulling this through by hand. Of course, everything goes slower when I'm trying to make a video. But I want my colored side to show more. And I'll see. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more. So under over. You can uh, put your um, floating selvages in when you wind your warp if you know you're going to be using them. I wasn't really planning on doing the log cabin um, for this, but uh, and I'm just tapering my ends as I overlap them. So I added the floating selvage um, in for just this piece. Since this is the only one on here, I think I'm going to do this with, well, actually, I might do one more. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now I can change. Oh, I've got to throw this again. Now, with this thinner thread, um, I'm using 5-2 because I didn't want it to show up a whole lot, but you could use, you know, your rug warp, your 8-4, and you could use it as a contrasting color if you wanted it to show. So I probably need to do like a sampler. Okay, so I want to switch for my next section and have the black warp be on top. And so what I have to do, I just threw one pick of the thin thread, I have to do two so that I can get my pattern to alternate now. So I've got two picks of the thinner thread in there. Oops. Take that back. I didn't change sheds. do-overs. Okay, so I threw the last pick of rags, the white was on top, then I'm going to throw my thin thread, the black is on top, but now I want the black on top to be on top for my rags. So 
I have to throw a second pick, changing sheds. Oops. So the thread's going through now with white on top. So two picks whenever you want to change colors. Now blacks on top. So I didn't join these because I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to put the colors together. So I'm just kind of doing this manually. It's not too bad since this is a narrow warp and I'm not in a rush to do this. So I put my two little tapered ends in there overlapping. Okay. And then I have to so under my floating selvage, over my floating selvage. And you'll see lots of rugs done in log uh, cabin where, um, you know, they'll vary the size of these blocks. And like I said, on this one, I only threaded these sections here for the log cabin. So if I had a threaded these sections for log cabin too, I could have got some, some interesting effects. And I could have, oops, can't be talking. I always have to have that thinner thread in there. And you'll know right away if you get off on your pattern, you know, because you'll have your dark threads or your light threads will be off. You know, there's no weaving police, so you can do this however suits your fancy. You don't have to use a floating selvage, but it sure makes it easier because you don't have to think about, you know, what's going on with the weft at your salvages. So black on top. You know, and like I said, you could you could do something with this thread that's in between. You could either try and get it to blend in or you could make it stand out more by varying the thickness and the and the color. So for my blue I have that on my shuttle so it goes the blue goes a lot faster but I wasn't planning on doing a whole lot of these little strips here. And you'll find, I'm sure if you look online, if you want to do log cabin, there's lots of information about doing this. I think the one thing I found, you know, when I was looking at it, they didn't really make clear about having this pick of the thinner thread in between and how you change colors. And it's really simple. I mean, it's not hard. I just, um, I'm easy to confuse. So, something different to try. 
if you haven't done this before. And I'm going to So there you can see, I think a little closer, what's happening. So, all right.